So do you remember when we first bought the house, the flip house, the renovation house that we just sold? We told you that we had a specific purpose in mind for the money that we were going to earn from that house. Well, we're going to let you know. Yeah, we're finally going to let you guys in on what's going on. <laughs> Well, hey everybody, I'm Bill. And I'm Elizabeth. Live simple. Live free. And we are very excited about what's happening in our life and we're very excited to share it with you because we now have, since we sold the house, actually it hasn't closed yet, it'll be closing in soon. Yeah. yeah. Um, but since we now have sold the house, we have a chunk of money that we're looking to invest. And um, now I want to talk a little bit about here about our finances just to let you know what's happening and every single time we do this we get people saying you don't know an explanation of your finances you don't need to tell us all this i disagree and here's why if you follow our channel at all you know that we talk a lot about debt freedom we talk a lot about how to get out of debt how to stay out of debt and what that means when you are out of debt and so we're using our finances as an example of what can happen um, rather than just make it theoretical, this is what we are actually do, doing using our debt-free system. And if you haven't seen that, uh, I'll put a link right up here uh, where you can see the entire de uh, uh, debt elimin elimination uh, the, the <laughs> debt elimination system and how to get out of debt and all of that. It's a very powerful system. So we have been working that system for a long time. A very long time. And we are now out of debt. And, you know, I used to actually uh, counsel with people to help them get out of debt. And when they would come to me, they would be in too much debt and they had an idea that they wanted to just get to the, their debt to the point where it's manageable. And so it would look like this. Now, the average person has been in the home for two years, believe it or not, two years is the average mortgage or uh, amount of mortgage. So there's an average of 28 years left on a 30 year mortgage. So their plan was they wanted to get out of debt, not get out of debt. They wanted to get their debt to the point of, of manageable. And then when they got near the end, then they would completely pay off the house and they would be debt free for retirement. But what actually happened? They were so used to living a debt lifestyle that they never got out of debt. Their debt just continued. And then many times they couldn't even retire because they had all these debt payments. The system that I teach is to talk about getting completely out of debt as fast as possible and then the money that you used to waste and spend on mortgage payments, interest payments, interest. car payments, credit card payments, you could that is all freed up then to invest. And for the average person, what is that? I would just pick some numbers out of the hat. Say $1,500 for a mortgage or for rent, maybe $500 for a car payment and $400 for a second car payment and then some credit cards and maybe some school debt. It could easily be 3000 a month or more. If you get completely debt free, you have $3,000 a month that you can invest. Can I say something real quick here? Absolutely. And this of course only works if once a person's out of debt, they stay that way. Right. And one of the things that has been kind of important is to not suddenly super upgrade your lifestyle. In other words, you know, um, if you can keep your lifestyle something, I mean, as long as it's got what you need and you can enjoy it, keep your lifestyle still somewhat simple. Mm -hmm. um, because otherwise, even if you have this extra money, um, money, it, 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 it abhors a vacuum. And, and you'll suddenly be spending it on other stuff. Right. So it's, it's kind of important to get a lifestyle set where you are comfortable and you, and you like it, but then not... <clears throat> get more extravagant even when you're out of debt because then it's hard to be able to have some money to begin to invest or to maybe have some big dreams that might be able to come true. And to get out of debt and then to keep your standard of living right there and not continue to you know get into more debt or spend money extravagant, extravagantly takes discipline. Yeah, well, I mean, it just it takes being determined, yeah. having that mindset, and sticking to it. And in fact, just the last video we just did, it was a video about discipline. Yeah, yeah. So you can look at that if you want. But um, so what happens then if you get out of debt and then you you 
keep your life disciplined and keep your standard of living the same and then you can start in, uh, saving that other investing that money that you used to pay, spend on debt payments well here's what this looks like <laughs> using my system the average person can get out of debt in seven years including their mortgage and then once they do that they start to invest and see what happens here at the end of 28 years when they would normally have just paid off their mortgage they are actually worth one million two hundred and seventy eight thousand dollars just on the same paycheck that they had before they just used it in a different way and used it in a, a much uh, more efficient manner so that's what we're talking about here okay so we've been working on this plan for a long time so where are we on this system and let's, let's just take a second we, it was probably a year and a half ago that we paid off this house right you know, right. um, so we've been saving. I mean, we, you can see we've been working on this house, things that needed to be done. But overall, we've been really trying to save now um, for a while. Yeah. And, you know, live simple, live free. I, I, occasionally, I have people say, you're not living simple. You're buying all the motorcycles and all these different things. Live simple doesn't mean live a minimalist lifestyle. It means live below your means. It means only buy stuff that you can afford without going into debt. And not having stuff you don't really need or want. Right. Yeah. So, so where are we now on this system? Yeah. Well, where here, are we on the chart? On the chart. Here's <laughs> the chart. So we are right about here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> baby steps. Yeah. Baby steps. <laughs> so what happened was we've been saving for for a while now. We have some money we want to invest, but we just didn't have enough investment or money for the investment that we wanted to get involved in. So we evoked the Kiyosaki plan. Yeah. Robert Kiyosaki, he wrote a book called Rich Man, uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Rich Dad, Poor Dad. That was his first book. Now he's got dozens of books. He's a very rich, rich man who lives in, in Hawaii, and he writes a lot of books about getting, getting rich. And they're not about specific investments. He doesn't say invest here, invest there. All of his books are talking about the, the mentality of the rich people as opposed to uh, middle class or poor or and, people that are struggling and how yeah. rich people think differently so the very first investment that he made that he talked about in this book when he was young he had a certain amount of money that he had saved and he wanted to buy a car with it but buying a car is not an investment a car is an expense yeah it, and it, it not, devalues it devalues it depreciates and it costs a lot of money and it's not an investment so what did he do? He took the money that he had for the car and he put that money down to buy an established laundromat. Mm -hmm. And that laundromat made enough cash flow on a monthly basis that it would pay off the rest of the loan to buy the laundromat. It also paid the, uh, the, made the payments on a car that he bought. So he had the money, he could have just bought the car outright. Instead, he used the money to buy a laundromat the laundromat paid for the car and for itself <coughs> once it was, the car was paid off he had the car and the laundromat instead of yeah. just the car yes so yes. that's what i call the kiyosaki principle so that is actually what we did we took the money that we had towards investment we put it down on the down payment on the commercial loan to buy the house to renovate uh, knowing that we would finish it and sell it and flip it within six months and pay off the loan for a uh, considerable uh, increase in our little nest egg that we had there. Yeah. So instead of just, you know, borrowing more money to do what we wanted to do, we invested that into something that would turn it over, flip it over into more money. With a lot of work. I mean, oh, it's yeah. the kind of thing we had to find a good initial investment and then everybody worked really hard. Um, but. Um, it's it, it's sold and it has worked exactly like it was supposed right. to. Now we only went into debt there because we abhor debt, but we only went into debt because we had a very specific plan to pay that debt off. Yeah, Bill calls it a good exit strategy. A good ex exit strategy. We didn't go into that thinking we're going to make payments for the next 20 years. We went into that knowing that we had a good exit strategy. As soon as we finished the house, we'd sell it, pay off the, the loan. In that way, we're using debt as a business tool to earn money rather than just to go out and buy toys and stuff. Well, and also, <clears throat> um, we were very careful 
as we worked with our our situation and with our daughter, a uh, daughter-in-law and son, uh, you know, Barry and Molly, that um, we did not um, use our own home. We did not use anything like that um, as, I guess, collateral or against that debt. It was a purely commercial let, um, loan on something that was going to turn right over again. And if for some reason the entire thing had crashed and burned, I had, I mean, we really put a lot of careful thought into making sure it was a wise idea. And it has worked very, very well, thank the Lord. But, um, you know, we knew that the worst possible scenario would be that somehow we would lose the house itself that we were renovating. Not our home. Not our home. House. The renovation house. And mess our credit up. But that was the worst possible scenario. Um, we did not risk, um, you know, my son did not risk, our son did not risk his home. We did not risk our home. Right. So, um, but it, it was using a business idea to raise a little bit more money that we were really kind of hoping to raise. Yeah. Yeah. And so now we've we've realized that goal, and so that's why I've said this is the last renovation that I'm going to do. <laughs> yeah, we'll see how that goes. Because I'm too old for that. <laughs> but anyway, so now we have a larger nest egg than we did before to do the investing. So what are we doing as an investment? Some of you, many of you have tried to guess what that is. <laughs> Some of you have actually guessed it correctly. <laughs> We are so um, thankful for what this is actually going to bring about in our life. Right. Well, so here we are in Florida. Looking for our winter snowbird home. Yep. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we have been uh, realizing, and especially recently, that I really have to get out of the super cold um, in the winter. And we've come down to Florida before, and I getting out of the cold and being down here in the winter I have felt so good but for years we've been trying to work out a way to do that with RVing um, and it has been one fiasco after another um, it it is surprisingly challenging to get reservations they, they're gone in a heartbeat yep. for places to stay and of course every time we've tried to bring an RV down here something broke down well if you remember last year <laughs> we left in our in our uh, van pulling the RV we were excited about what, what was it six weeks we had reservations yes, for down and, here and we worked hard to get those six weeks and we got about a hundred miles from home and the van broke down we had to pay several hundred dollars to have the van and the travel trailer towed home again and that's with tow insurance I mean, and ugh. it was months before we could get the parts to fix that van so what did we do well um, we went ahead and came down by just getting motels. We went right. ahead and we went to St. Petersburg, and we've shared that with you. We went to St. Augustine, and um, so we were able to spend two weeks down here in hotels for the same cost of six weeks in the, in the yeah, RV. Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> you know, but we we were realizing that um, you know we we really would enjoy it down here in the winter, and also I just it's a decision I've had to make. Yeah, you know. And so we've been trying to come down here in the winter for her, you know, oh, asthma and all that for quite a while. For like six years. But that was the first time that we actually spent some time here in the winter, and it was only two weeks, and we absolutely loved it. Yeah. And it was on that trip on the way home that we started talking about those loud cars going past. <laughs> that's, some, that's some kid that's really enjoying his hot rod. <laughs> My car is loud. So we started talking about, well, what in the world are we doing spending all these, how many thousands of dollars trying to maintain a travel trailer and a, and tow, a vehicle. tow vehicle, and then we can't find the reservations, and when we do find reservations, we can only stay two weeks at a time, and then we have to move on. We thought, Phooey, why don't we just sell all that and buy a house? Yeah, yeah. Now this was like the real initial discussion. Yeah, this was you know? this was last year. Yeah, just the kind of beginning initial discussion. Well, for one thing, while we were down here, we were noticing. Now that we were, you know, kind of in the more the center part of the state, St. Petersburg, and across the St. Augustine, but you know, noticing um, that there was just a lot of little areas that weren't fancy or um, commercial right. that seemed very nice. You know, and you and Barry even talked about it when you were down on that bike trip. That there was, you were surprised at how much you loved rural Florida. 
Right, you know, right. You know. So initially we started looking everywhere <laughs> in this area down south of Orlando and what we discovered very quickly was that the houses there were just too expensive for us. I mean we could have bought one easily if we were willing to put a big mortgage on it but you know us we don't want to do mortgage. No, no, no. So then we discovered that this section up here in the north is a lot uh, less expensive and we could actually afford a home up here um, so we got home from from that trip and it was like what three weeks later yeah it wasn't very long we came down here to Florida again just on a recon trip yeah just going and we we came down to Pensacola and we went from Pensacola all the way across the northern portion of the state to Jacksonville and it was so fun because we just went into every little town <laughs> and it's like we had a different night in each town as we came across the state. It was like, is this the town? How is, about this one? Is this the town? This is fun. Is this the town? <laughs> it was a very enjoyable trip. So that just kind of gave us an idea of what northern Florida was like. Yes. So we basically have decided now that we're buying a home in northern Florida and we're not going to tell you any more about the location than that because we need to remain anonymous somewhat. But yeah. it's somewhere in northern Florida. Yeah. And we, you know, um, we just learned as much as we could. Right. You know, it was kind of important. Um, it's the first time we've ever just gone somewhere and said, where do we want to live? Moves have always been based on work, you know, jobs, family, something like that. And of course, it's going to be just a snowbird home. It's just for the real cold weather. Yeah. And, um, so we'll so. be down here three months or four months in the winter. And then the rest of the year, we may come down for a week now and then just to check on the house and make sure it's still there. Yeah. <laughs> but we, we love where we live in, you know, in Virginia. I love the spring. My dogwood blooms. I love this, the, the summer, the fall. It's just when it starts getting really cold that um, it's not working. So. Now doing this actually kind of kills two birds with one stone. It kind of yeah. takes care of two goals at the same time. The first one is financial. You know, as we talked about earlier in this video, that we're now to the point where we're starting for the first time in our lives to actually have a little bit of money that we can invest and yeah. where can we invest. So real estate is a good place to invest. And the other, of course, is getting out of the cold, especially for Elizabeth. And <laughs> it's funny, as I say that, she's putting up her, her hood. It's about 55 right, that right now and the wind's blowing, so it's a little nippy. Cotton bales. There goes a truck full of cotton bales. <laughs> it's um yes it's a little nippy but so, so it's a little nippy and so yes it does get cold here in North Florida but at home at home it's snowing right now it's snowing and ice and about 25 degrees colder or something yeah, like that yeah. so even though it's a little nippy I'm still being very careful but even though it's a little nippy um, it's it's not cold cold and here in <laughs> yeah. North Florida the average high temperature in the winter in January and February is 65 which I find very pleasant. Yeah, That's so, average. Sometimes it's even warmer. So it could be in the, in, you know, it could be 80 or it could be 50, but uh, well, we can live with that. I feel like that I would be coming down after I've enjoyed the fall and Christmas, you know, um, and then coming down to a spring environment here in northern Florida. In the winter, it's like spring. It's not super hot, but it very seldom gets really cold. Yeah. And then when I get done here and I have to get home in time for my dogwood to bloom, um, I'll be back into spring again. So that's right. actually pretty right. cool, you know. So we're really excited because we've been working our debt-free plan for yes. years, oh, years, for, for years. decades. Yes. And we're finally to the point where not only do we have our home in Virginia paid for, but we st we're starting to be able to invest, which we've never ever in our lives been able to do before. Yes. And that's only because we're concentrating on the debt-free plan, as I talk about. and. Uh, so this is the first major step and we're very excited about it. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very feeling very hopeful that we're going to be able to find some place that'll be a blessing for those cold months up, up at home. And you know, and, and I'm just looking forward to someday having the, the family down visiting and you know, I'm just all this grandma stuff, yeah. you know, and so, yeah. So we're here for about a week to look at houses in the area. We have been, <laughs> Elizabeth has been, looking on the MLS and looking on Zillow and all those other places on for, Redfin, for the yeah. better part of a year now. Yes, I've been so really... we yes. have a real handle on what's <laughs> happening in the real estate market in North Florida. So we come down here with five or six houses already that we want to look at and we have a realtor to help us with that. Yeah. 
So in the next video or two, we will be um, showing you that hunting process for houses. Yeah, yeah, I'll try to bring you guys along as we're starting to, yeah. to hunt. I don't yeah. know if that'll be the very next video, but it'll be soon. Yeah. So yeah. we'll show you the houses we're looking at and we'll show you the, the hunting process and the decision process, which is sometimes difficult. Uh-huh, it's a serious decision, yeah. you know, and we also want to make uh, a wise, good investment. Right. You know, um, and that, but by the way, that means that we are not going to be looking at any mobile homes or uh, places for an RV or something like that because, um, not that I have anything against mobile homes, I, you know, I've, I think they can be beautiful, but we want an actual house um, on yeah. the land so that we feel like it's a, a good investment, right. you know. Um, the houses don't depreciate as much, you know, so. So, dear, you ready to go start house hunting? Yeah, pretty amazing. This is really exciting. Yeah, it is. <laughs> you know, it's it's interesting because whenever we've moved before, we've always moved for a specific purpose. We had a job there or family that we needed to be near or something. With this move, it was just, well, where do you want to go? What do you want to do? We had no <laughs> agenda. We just drove around saying, oh, this looks cool. Let's try this town. <laughs> <laughs> it was really wild. And so now we're driving around the town going, do we like this house? Do we like that house? Yeah. Or at least we will be. So The first the first trip, re reconnaissance trip down here was, what area do we want? And now this is, let's look at everything we can find in that area. Right. Um, so, yeah. Okay, let's go house hunting. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And I promise I'm not really cold. Like I said, it's just a cool day. <laughs> so. Okay, thanks for watching everybody. It is simple. Live free. You be blessed. Yes, we love you. We'll take you guys along. <laughs> There's that car again. Okay, bye-bye guys. This started in St. Petersburg, but I love those live oaks with the moss. They are magnificent.